when you come talking about the Bible, um, King James Version, obviously religious people um, tend to stick with King James language and King James Version, and quite often they pray in King James language and sing songs with these and thous. It's just not modern language. And when you go back and look at the history of the King James Version, and look at how it was translated. And this is public knowledge, and you can you can research this in all sorts of different areas by just Googling King James Version. But you'll find different things, different variations. Some absolutely you must read this is the only author thing, because they call it the authorized version. Well, it just means that King James authorized it. Doesn't mean that God authorized it. In fact, God didn't intend it in the first place, I don't believe. So I, I honestly don't believe that the King James Version is the one that people should be reading. For accuracy, I tend to read the New American Standard. I would also look at Young's Literal Translation, which is an actual just word for word translation without the bias of the translator generally. Um, but there was an agenda when King James translated, had that translated. He wanted, because the church and the state were connected and the church was used to control people for the state. So having a version that they could agree, which was, conditioned on certain things and there were certain phrases they weren't allowed to use um also when you look at the original version um there was a big connection to freemasonry and some of the diagrams and pictures within the, or on the original king james versions are very freemasonry orientated and there was uh, there was even uh, information that i found that a freemason actually um proofread and sort of corrected some of that so we don't know exactly but there were 70 people i think that were assigned to translate it all men um and they were given a remit by king james um, and the religious church uh for particular things in other words they couldn't use ecclesia they had to use church um, which again not the meaning of ecclesia because ecclesia carried a governmental form well they didn't want anyone being in government other than the king um so there were certain things that they weren't allowed to use now when they obviously translated it they didn't have the use of all the modern greek understanding that we do they don't have all they didn't have all of the greek uh, translations that we now do they did use the original i think uh, codus sinaticus uh, greek but generally they used the latin which had been used for the previous 1200 years as their go-to default Therefore, words like metanoia in Greek, which means with mind, um, are translated repentance because repentance is a Catholic doctrine. Um, also, the word confession uh, has a confessional understanding doctrine. And there's lots of words which were translated that way, as well as words which were translated from an understanding of eschatology and other things. Um, so go back all that time to 1600 when they sort of started looking at it all um they didn't have the information we had now um they didn't have the early church fathers uh books as we have now and lots of things were discovered um and of course the original uh greek version had many corrections in the margins and uh, so even that was corrected along the way by various people and we don't know who so I do not believe the King James Version is the version which God wants us to read. Read whatever version you like, but don't be controlled by anything. The Mirror Bible is a version where I believe that God is inspired in recent days, which gives us a deeper understanding or a deeper connection to the meaning behind the words that God was trying to convey. Now, the Bible itself was completed uh, before AD 70 and all of the last days end times all refer to the end of the old covenant age so there's no prophecy left to be fulfilled other than the period we're in which is the restoration of all things and the kingdom of God filling the earth so you know I would encourage you to seek God and seek Jesus as the word of God and ask him and and engage with him for truth he is the truth every version of the Bible is going to be translated with some form of bias some form of previous understanding rather than just using the word so there are many words um which are imminent mellow greek word which is about to which are translated in the king james and other versions shall 
Well, shall and about to are two very different words. Shall just means something shall happen. About to means it is about to happen soon. So a lot of words like that, parousia, about coming and presence, very different when you read in the literal translation, or I use a, an interlinear translation, which just gives me the meaning of the words. And then I look at how those words engage with the spirit and the spirit then can give me information. Now I use the Bible a lot, but I don't use the Bible in my own personal times with God because God speaks to me directly. I don't need a mediator of a book. Why would I read a book about someone when I can meet that person and do meet that person every day face to face? So I'd encourage you to pursue the relationship and don't be too concerned about which version or anything else. Um, bottom line is, you know, you don't need to read it at all. If you feel that you want to read it, then choose a version that gives you the best uh, thing reading it. But don't hold it too literally because you're reading someone else's interpretation of another language. Um, which is not always the best. The spirit of truth, Jesus as the living word of God, is always going to be the best place to go when seeking revelation and truth. Now, you can find a lot of information online. You can find different things around it. Um, but you only have to look at the words themselves in English and then look at the Greek meanings and you realize a lot of them have been mis misread. Things like we live by faith in the Son of God. Well, it doesn't say in, it says of. And of is a very different of or from so i live by faith from the son of god who empowers me i live by the faith of the son of god in me and what he believes about me not in my faith in him so there's a lot of religious stuff that has been taken uh, from the versions that we have to form doctrines which aren't there another one is subjection of females to males or wives to husbands that isn't there in, in ephesians 5 either that was added. Uh, the thing is to mutually be submitted one to another in the being filled with the Holy Spirit, which was the original clause, not be subject to your husband. That is added. And when you get a version like the New American Standard, it has in italics those which the translator has added to make us understand what they want us to understand. So don't take any italic word, it's not there, and doctrines have been made from italicized versions of adding things into it which aren't there in the original so i would just encourage you pursue the relationship the father son spirit want you to be included in the circle of their relationship they want you to know you're loved accepted filled with joy and peace overwhelmed with love and then you can be an expression of that love to the world around you without the judgment that's come through the religious systems using the bible for the law mixing of covenants, all that type of stuff is all there. So I'd encourage you, just pursue the relationship. You'll find that God will speak to you. My sheep hear my voice. Jesus didn't say my sheep will read my book. Man made the book using the documents that Constantine had gathered for particular purposes that fitted in with their regime at the time. So today we have the spirit to give us words like they did in the early church. Remember, they didn't have a Bible for 385 years and the gospel spread right around the world. Um, we then went into the dark ages when the Bible was given and Jerome's Latin Vulgate version, all of those versions are coming from a very Latin view. The word hell is not in the Bible. You know, that word is an English word translated from four Greek words, Tartarus, Hades, and a Hebrew word, Sheol. Um, and Gehenna, which was a literal place. So our concept of hell isn't in the Bible. And if you read Young's literal translation, it's not used once. In, in the King James Version, I think it's used 56 times. Well, what does that tell you about what it's trying to convey to you about God? You know, God is not going to punish and torment his children forever and ever. He loves his children and wants his children to have a relationship. So love never fails. Love never gives up. That's the key. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.